Hey, golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It is, I believe it's episode 47 now, so we're getting ourselves rolling here, building up the episodes. If you haven't yet, make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcast platform. Or, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Uh, today, we've got one of our favorite guests. Uh, if you've been following the YouTube channel, you've seen plenty of Kevin, and uh, we really can't get enough of Kevin. And, and, and of course, uh, he's had a pretty... Uh, solid stretch of golf here recently that we want to talk about and get him on and of course we'll talk about club fitting and and um his favorite products for the year of course we got to get another what's in the bag update from kevin as well that's obligatory when we get with kevin but uh mr kevin Kraft, thanks for joining um how are things for you everything's good yeah um it's really coming into the season and we're busy here at work and i'm scrambling to make as much time to practice as i can and uh, tournaments are coming a little more fast and furious now, so uh, it's, it's my favorite time of year. Yeah, it's it's uh, for us up here. It's really finally getting to that point where it's consistently warm. Uh, you know, we've had, you know, you have those days where it gets down to like 60, 50, and you know, when it's in March, that's great up here. But yeah. uh, this time of year, it's that's it's getting back to chilly. But I think I think forecast up here, it's like 70s for the next 10 days. So we're finally crossing that line here up in Minnesota. I imagine it's similar where you are. So you've been able to get out and, and finally get things going, huh? Yeah, we've had we've actually had quite a bit of heat. We've had some upper 80s. I think we've already hit 90 once, which is Ooh, kind of crazy considering it's still pretty early in the year. But um, yeah, it's it's looking pretty good. The golf courses are all they're pretty lush. We've still had a lot of rain, so you know if you can't grow grass in these conditions, uh, <laughs> you're gonna have some problems. Yeah, because uh, it's been it's been pretty lush, but it's it's been good. Yeah, that's uh that's great to hear because you know that's if you're if you're in the business of growing uh, growing grass at a certain in a certain uh, in a certain manner and you can't really do it when it's perfect like that, not gonna yeah. happen for you. So, uh, we have all right. <laughs> We got to talk about the big the big win for you, Kevin. Um, if you uh, haven't seen or heard, Kevin has a uh, vic- an, another victory added to the resume on his in his golf career, the Pennsylvania Senior Open uh, earlier this spring. So, Kevin, congratulations on that. First of all, kind of just run through the day uh, if you could. You know, uh, you know, talk about the course, the round. Um, I know you did make birdie on eighteen to uh, effectively win by a shot. So. Uh, yep kind of talk how things went um did you play was it one of those rounds you really got hot or you kind of had to grind through some things i mean just talk about <laughs> how that round went yeah this was a very grindy golf course this was uh Sewickley heights golf club in pittsburgh and this was set up very much like an open um they had actually hosted u.s seen, uh u.s open locals the week before and they had the rough really deep uh matter of fact the day before we started they came out and cut uh three mowers widths from the from the first cut down a little bit just so we could find golf balls <laughs> um th- seriously it was it was it was total lost ball time if you got out of if you got out of the fairways so uh so you did that so that was helpful did not help if you hit it in there. I mean, you could find it, but getting out was going to be, it was always going to be sure. a challenge. Gre- greens were huge. Some of the biggest greens I've ever played on, uh, but very, very undulating. And they were rolling 14 on the stint meter, uh, which they had apparently slowed them down from the open locals where they had them running at 16, according to the head pro. Jeez. Uh, I have never seen, I've never seen, I've 16, never heard 16 so as a stint number. Ever. I know. I didn't it's, even know that was on a stint meter. Yeah, it's it's a number that I was not familiar with either. So, but 14 <laughs> was was pretty awesome. Every place I've played since then has seemed slow. Um, so this cor- this golf course played hard. Like it was the way it was set up. Certainly one of the top 20 co- most difficult courses I've played. Um, and that's that's cool. I like I like hard golf courses. So I think that tends to play a little bit more into my hands. Um, first day we had some wind and the course played tough. And it was, um, scores weren't that great. I shot 74, which was uh, two over and was in sixth place. So uh, I was just happy that I hadn't shot myself out of it. I always have this sense that I'm playing worse than I am in, in things like this. You know, I get, 
I can kind of tell when golf courses are playing hard, but I always just assume that somebody's going, you know, ballistic and shooting. Stupid yeah, see, when you say that, you it's... you mean relative to like the the competitors? Like you kind of feel like your you never really feel like your score is stacking up with the others. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can tell. Like, I mean, you play. You know, you know it, when a golf course is playing difficult. But in tournament scenarios, I'm just always used to there being, you know, that guy or that group of guys that just goes low no matter what. And we didn't really have it. So there was only one guy under par, I think, uh, the first day. And uh, it was Bob Friend from, from Oakmont. And so going into the, the second day, I knew that, you know, I wasn't out of it. I just needed to put up a good number. And I got off to a fast start second day. I hit uh, a parred first hole, and then I went birdie eagle so it got to three under real quick and then from there it was just kind of like hold on man because uh the golf course was still playing difficult even though the wind wasn't blowing and uh it was just it's one of those courses where greens are very compartmentalized and if you're not in those in the right place you're gonna have 60 70 80 foot putt uh, up a slope or down a slope, and it was really hard to get the ball around the hole. So yeah. there were a lot, a lot of three putts uh, at the, at this tournament. Yeah, Thankfully, not so many for me. So, do you are you aware in, in the in that event of where you at on the leaderboard? And like, did you are you are, are you keeping track of that yourself? Or are you just going out and playing your golf? Um, and then you also want to kind of get to like hole eighteen as well when you did make the birdie there. Did you know you needed a birdie there? Or I guess kind of talk me through that. I don't know if you're the type to focus on where you're at on the leaderboard or maybe you don't even know about it. So I'm usually a just let it all play out kind of guy. But there comes a point in the round where if I know that I'm in the mix, I, I want to know. So right. um, when we got to the so everything was done through golf genius so yeah. uh one of the guys in the group was was uploading scores problem with that is that not everybody's consistent right so you don't necessarily there might be a group that's just not yeah. doing it you at have all most and of then, the information but not all of the information right exactly so to a point i knew what was going on i started looking on the 12th hole uh, to see kind of where i stood and at that point i just made bogey on 12 and I was, they, nothing else had been updated. I had actually had the lead already, which I had no idea of at that point. Um, and then I didn't look again until 18. Uh, I just kind of kept on going about business, made a bunch of pars, made a bunch mm -hmm. of pars. Um, you know, not that I wasn't trying to make birdies. It just wasn't really happening. Um, so I got to 18 T and I looked at the, I looked at the you know, it's golf genius app and I was like, okay, so I think I'm tied. And that did turn out to be what was what was going on. And it was actually a really cool hole because 18 is kind of tough. It's it tees off and the whole fairway just kind of runs diagonal left to right, which is not my preferred shot shape. And I've been using this auto flex shaft now for around six weeks. And I just have not spent a lot of time working on that little bleeder left to right. Mm -hmm. So I'm standing there on this tee box and I'm, tied with a guy in my group and there's another guy behind me that's tied and the guy in my group i mean amazing player just hitting tons of great shots making everything and he'd bogeyed three putted 17 from like Ooh. 18 feet above the pin like he hadn't yeah. missed anything all day so i was like it was a real surprise when he missed a little five footer on on 17 i was like okay well there's the that little sound we're hearing is the is the the door opening of the door yeah. yeah just that just that little tiny bit right so the only thing for him was he's he's not particularly long and so he could play this hole straight away to the corner i cannot it was 255 carry the bunkers on the corner and then it's 290 if you hit it straight through into the next one well i didn't want that i'm i'm an automatic bogey machine out of out of fairway bunkers at this point you can just write down bogey because i'm either going to blade it or i'm going to chunk it and i've, I've got to work on it it's terrible but uh for this shot i just i was just like okay well you just got to stand up there and you got to hit the shot this is one of those holes where you simply just have to stand up and hit the shot and sure enough i 
pounded one with just a little baby bleed to the right and left myself 127 yards. And that was actually a perfect number, which I had been fighting all week. I've been getting, you know, partial numbers. I'm right in between Mm -hmm. clubs all week. And I am not very good at that right now because I haven't been practicing that. You know, I come into work early and I hit some balls and I'm hitting, you know, 30 the full swings. solid shots. Yeah. Right. Full swings. So, you know, I'm I'm out there just trying to feel things in and I don't have any feel. So, you know, that wasn't working all that great. I'm not hitting, you know, particularly tight, but I hit that one to about six feet and uh, kind of ground out the putt there. A couple had a little back off situation where I was realizing mm. that I might not be completely committed to my line and needed to uh, step back and retool it and, and then go back in and, you know, pretty much dead center. So, and then the guy that was playing with me made bogey. So he ended up out of it. And then the guy that was behind me drove it in the, the bunker short and he was the left-hander tried to hit a cut out of the bunker, ended up hitting a kind of a pull and just left himself, you know, a really tough one chipped it, hit a really good, flop shot to about 30 feet and missed it so mm. so that kind of then left you as the as the champion so that's uh yes that's really cool though uh so i know in you've won so you've won the was it like your did you win the pennsylvania it was massachusetts open or was it pennsylvania I'm trying to keep which one you've that's won right. twice pennsylvania pennsylvania okay so you've won the pennsylvania yep. state open twice Yep. And now you add the senior open to that. Uh, it's quite yep. the resume you're kind of building for yourself there in the state of Pennsylvania in terms of open championships. I like Pennsylvania. It's been good to <laughs> me. It really has been good to me. Um, one of my dreams was always to win a state open, and I could never seem to do it in my native Ohio. And then when we moved uh, back from Oregon to Pennsylvania, and I decided I wanted to try and start playing tournament golf again, it's been a good run. I've been very fortunate to to play a lot of good golf and yeah. at the right times and uh yeah this was this is special to me because now i have both the pennsylvania open and the senior open titles at the same time and that's yeah. tough to do because the kids that these days the kids these days you know it's, you're, you're <laughs> it's not so wrong. difficult because I mean... dude they're so long and they have no fear and and they just kind of go about their business good thing is that for me is that i i know how to manage my way around a golf course and I can stay in the thick of it. And as long as I, you know, make enough birdies, I can, com- I can compete. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, so let's, so let's, we'll, we'll go back to your first, we're going to talk a little bit about your first uh, state open at Lancaster um, yep. in a little bit here, but I just wanted to kind of get from you just any, uh, you know, what's coming soon here in terms of competition for you, how you feeling about the game, uh, how you feeling about these upcoming events that you might have. Um, I know, got a couple things that you're you know you got for sure kind of pinned in on the calendar i know yeah so monday i've got uh, the u.s senior open qualifier which to me is in some ways it's the biggest event i can play in all year uh qualifier wise just because you know it's it's our it's our our old guys national you know, <laughs> national event so uh and having been in it a couple of times i'd really like to be in it again um Going back to the same place I've been going, I love the golf course there. I feel like I'm hitting it pretty well right now. I'm probably still not playing enough golf to to be as ready as I might necessarily want to be. Played yesterday, actually hit the ball really well. Didn't wasn't my best scoring day, but I feel like I'm putting really well right now, which is that's some different self talk than I've had in (laughs) quite a while. So. Um, I actually feel really good with the putter and so I'm hoping to, to ride that wave back into another, another senior open. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is, this is fun because, so this is actually, this will be published two days after you compete in that. So, um, gotcha. I'm hoping by this point, this thing is live. We're going to be able to add a little editor's note and say, Hey, by the way, Kevin Kraft has moved on in U S senior open. So, um, let's, let's hope so. Yeah. Let's hope so. Yeah. Yeah. We'll then, see. Uh, the week after that, I'm going to up to what's, I guess it's actually technically, I guess it's central New York, um, up by the lake to do the Dick Sporting Goods pre-qualifier uh, for a Champions Tour event. If I get through the pre-qual, then I got to go back up a couple days later to do the actual qualifier. Would love to get into that one. That would be really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I have I have another event scheduled for that same week, just in case. I signed up for the New Hampshire Open, so I'll go up for that. And then last part of no, of uh, 
of June will be U.S. Senior Open if everything goes well. Got it. Yeah. Uh, pretty good slate of potential events there for, for Mr. Craft. And um, yeah, yeah, it sounds great that you're, that you're hitting the ball. Well, putting well, those are two things that typically kind of lead to some good scores. So um, yeah, obviously we're all rooting for you and everybody watching and listening is as well. So um, oh, thank you. All right, let's go. Let's go back to, we're talking about Lancaster country club and we're talking about that because the U S women's open is this week there. And we were kind of talking a little bit before, uh, kind of hitting the record button about <laughs> how, how difficult that course is. Um, and I, I'm wondering if they might talk about it or show it maybe on the broadcast or whatnot, but uh, the course record is actually held by Mr. Kevin Kraft. So uh, a little insight into Lancaster Country Club. Maybe can you just explain or kind of dive into what the women are facing this week? And again, this is going to be aired. This is aired and as the completion of the tournament has already happened. But what, so in that tense, what did the women just deal with, I guess, at the U.S. Women's Open this week? So Lancaster's a tough golf course. I mean, it's, there's a fair number of elevated uh, approach shots, uh, very much like Sewickley Heights, actually. Um, I think the ladies are probably getting it a little bit more difficult than I had it. Uh, we had about seven inches of rain in the two weeks leading into the Pennsylvania open that year in 2018. And so I don't think the greens were as fast as they could have been. And they were definitely, you know, they weren't, it wasn't firm and fast. So, um, looks like what they're seeing out there today is a, a golf course that's got its full teeth. Mm -hmm. Um, looks like the greens are really quick. Uh, they're undulating They're It's, I don't know. I, I see the scores and I remember the golf course that I played and I shot 68, 64, 72. And, you know, 64 was, was, was really good. And I made about a 25 footer with about five feet of break on the last hole to, to, to shoot 64. And I, you know, got done. I was like, Oh, that, that was a good round. And, uh, I had, um, James Robinson from the Wilmington store. I was, I was in the Wilmington store at that point, but uh, I had him caddying for me. And you know, I was like, that one that was pretty good. So we went to, we went and got some food and came back to the golf course. And we're like, we were kind of greeted with, Hey, uh, that, that was course record, which is crazy <laughs> because it's the golf course has been there since like 1920 or something like that. And it's, that's only four, six, that's only six under par. That speaks to how I mean, it's part seven it is. <laughs> Right. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. So, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see. I fully expected my the course record to go down this week, um, but I'm also I mean, thinking and it of still it could. You know, as of from, uh, this, we're, we're, yeah, we're recording on Thursday during yeah. the first round. Yeah. But uh, the looks yeah. of it, you're right. I mean, the the course is showing its teeth. Um, you could ask Nelly Corda about the twelfth hole. She would probably <laughs> agree. Uh, so. As a, I mean, we found she'll probably out get morning. mad and shoot yeah. 63 tomorrow. You yeah, know. you know what? That's probably pretty likely. Um, so yeah. that, that that has tended to be her thing lately is sort of kind of just lurking back in the pack. Uh, now, granted, being whatever she is, 10 over par as of the start of this recording is one thing. But yeah. she tends to be that kind of comeback queen, if you will, of, of uh, starting maybe not quite as fast and then turning it up when she needs to. So maybe she'll make some mat, uh, miracle run and make the cut, and then who knows what happens from there. But uh, definitely playing very, very tough for the ladies this week. There's there's yeah. not really a doubt about that. Here's the thing about records. They're made to be broken. Yeah. Yeah. I've had, a, right I've had a lot of course records through my time, and I'm sure a good number of them are no longer standing. So I'm just happy to be a little piece of history. Do you realize how, like, I mean, it's crazy that you can just nonchalantly just – yeah, I, I hold a lot of course records. It, yeah, it's not a big deal. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's Mr. Kevin Kraft. That's I don't know. It, with out there. It's it's just not. I don't know. I mean, it's. I guess it's a big deal, but it's just playing golf. So I yeah, don't know. I don't. No, I mean you've you know, played a lot of golf. And you've done shout it from the very rooftops well, that so. hey, I've got 15 course records or anything yeah. like that. But no, know. I yeah, no, I, I just I I respect it. You know. It's a uh, it's a different level of golf than I'll ever achieve. Uh, so, <laughs> with uh, we talked about U.S. Women's Open briefly there. We got to also then hit on with it coming up the U.S. Open um, and yeah. kind of the aftermath of everything that took place at the PGA um, as well. So, kind of if you've got you know 
a, a couple of maybe quick, you know, picks, I guess, for the U S open this, this year, obviously at Pinehurst. Um, is there any couple, a couple names maybe that you're really watching and think you can make a run at, at it this year? I'd be surprised if Bryson didn't get himself back in the mix. Yeah. Um, he looked really great at the, at the PGA. Uh, my take on Bryson has changed a little bit because of the things that happened at the PGA. I think he's matured a bit. I think he's gotten a little better hold of, of his, his outward persona. You know, he always seemed to be a little bit socially awkward. And I think he's gotten over most of that. He does a lot of cool content. And mm -hmm. so really I does. think he's, I think he's just got a little better sense of himself now and maybe he's not taking himself quite so seriously, which is, which is cool. I really liked the Bryson that we saw at the, at the PGA. I mean, he's fun. The it, part it, just, with, it makes the tournament more yeah. entertaining, you know, and he's, it, I mean, again, yeah. the iron lofts are what they are, but the fact that he just, he hits that, uh, was it 16 or 17 on Sunday when he's kind of needing a birdie hooks the drive left. Oh. It bounces back into the fairway, and he's got like two forty-five or whatever. Just takes a six iron. Yeah, two, and he had two fourteen three feet. Yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, it was so it was, it was on sixteen. Yeah, he hit the he hit the trees, kicked it out. Eight iron from two fourteen. That's what to it was. Feet. Eight iron from two fourteen. He yeah. goes, then he goes to seventeen, and his ball speed's one hundred and ninety-six miles an hour. <laughs> like, yeah. that's just crazy. But my favorite thing about the whole, the, my two favorite things about Bryson that week were. The, the ball that he threw to the kid the, and then making sure the, the kid got it off. Yeah. Yes. And he was ready to go over the ropes and just pound this guy. If he didn't give him, his, <laughs> give him that golf ball. So I got a lot of respect for that. And then also when he was on the range hitting shots and he had the big, you know, they had the big monitor up there. The second that Xander's putt went in, he took off to go congratulate Xander. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of class that I want to see from the people that I root for. Um, and he was very gracious in his in his uh, interview afterwards. He said, you know, great job by Xander. You know, he, he deserves it. He's been playing really great. So, you know, that's yeah. that's all you can ask for in, in somebody that you're going to root for. So that was cool. And I tell you what, if you bet against Scotty Scheffler, you're nuts. <laughs> right. I mean, it's I uh, mean, seriously, it, it really seems like it's. It's it's uh you know I I've been seeing this kind of this talking point through uh you know the media and stuff you know if it's not going to be a Bryson or one of these challengers that's been kind of knocking on the door, um, it it probably is going to be Scotty and you don't want to come back to the PGA and think is that incident the reason that Scotty <laughs> didn't have say a Grand Slam in 2024 yeah uh, because yeah it's not it's not insane to think uh, that that's very possible especially. You know, we had the one round during the PGA where he didn't have Ted Scott on the bag because he went back for yep. like, a daughter's graduation. Yep. And um, mm -hmm. I mean, if he if he has Ted Scott for all four days there, he might be, uh, you know, he might have probably contended there a little bit. Who's to say if maybe that uh, that incident also didn't kind of, you know, creep into his mind a little bit more on Saturday than Friday? I mean, I don't sure who are we to say, but um, it's the whole thing is just wild. Uh, but to your point, yeah, I think it Scott is being contention again. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's, you know, the thing is about majors, it, it, people can get hot, right? Yeah. I mean, Rory McIlroy could certainly be there. Um, there's, there's any number of guys. There's, there's 30 or 40 players that you could potentially see like going, okay, this guy could do it. So, yeah. Um, I'll take, I'll take Scotty and Bryson against the field <laughs> yeah. you know, and, feel, and feel pretty good about it. But then, then when I lose, I, I'm not going to be shocked. Yeah, that's a, uh, yeah, that's I, I, Scotty and Bryson against the field is, you're getting it. You're, I think you got a lot of win equity there, uh, compared yeah. to the, the to the field. So, um, I'll I'll throw one other name out there before we move on, and that is I I'm really rooting for Sahit Tagala to come through mm. and yeah. win a major. He he's been knocking on the door a couple of times um, of majors. Had a had a rough Sunday at the PGA, but. Um, mm -hmm. clearly has the game for it. So, uh, that's one I'm, I'm going to be rooting for him for sure. Um, at Pinehurst. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I really like the guy. I think he's, I think he's, he, he brings a, a, you know, a great talent to the, to the tour and he's fun to watch. He's, he's somebody that's going to be good for a long, long period of time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely a, a good, a great personality out there too. Um, uh, and mm -hmm. I think 
I think a fan favorite already, which is which is which is uh, really cool. And yeah, yeah, I mean, he's it's going to be a fun tournament. It always is at the majors. Um, so it's uh, I'm already looking forward to it. But uh, moving. Oh, on I heard now. A, I heard a crazy stat. Wait, one more thing. Yeah, yeah. I heard an absolutely crazy stat. Uh, listening to Sirius XM radio, they were talking about uh, you know greens and regulation at the U.S. Open. They thought that if somebody misses only 25 greens for the week that it would be a great week wow 25 out of 72 if they miss only 25 yes that would be a good week yeah i mean they're all turtle backs right they're that's they're, right that's right they all have the kind of the, the runoff areas like all over the place right yeah. that's how pioneers are set yep. up yeah yeah. That kind of tells so, me that probably the wedge game kind of chipping and in, in sh- around the green game is going to have to be on point for a lot of these guys, right? Exactly. I mean, would have to be. And who's yeah. who's who's better at that at that than Scotty? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've got it. We're going to come back to this in a couple of weeks, and I think we're going to like some of the things that we've discussed here about Scotty. So, yeah. uh, all right. Now we're going to move on to my personal favorite segment of our conversations in our content, and that is you're what's in the bag so um <laughs> we've we we updated every single time we either do a podcast interview or you know we get together for videos uh kind of just run through what's in the bag you know if if, if it stayed the same throughout the year um uh, that's fine but if there is something new or maybe adjusted that you've that you've uh made in the last few weeks uh kind of maybe uh if you could kind of expand on that okay um drivers my Dark speed X uh, sitting at eight degrees. Autoflex SF 505XX shaft. Nothing really changed there. Um, I got the burner mini driver with the uh, Kylie White 60S. Nothing's changed there. Two hybrid, four hybrid, both King Tech, both MMT shafts. Nothing changed there. In the trunk is the dark speed uh, titanium fairway wood, LS fairway wood. It only gets brought out if I'm playing a course with really long par fives that I might need that extra 15 yards of carry that I can't get over the over the four hybrid or uh, two hybrid. Mm-hmm. Um, irons haven't changed. Uh, Forge Tech five iron, King CB six seven. King MB eight through gap, uh, Taylor made mill grind four. Now there have been some changes there, but it's all been in lofts. So I've been floundering a little in terms of the, the distances. And so I've actually, I had a 56 that I took up to 58. I've now taken it up to 60, um, to give me just a solid 80 yard club, like full swing, 80 yard club. Mm-hmm. And because I did that, I adjusted the 54, which I'd bent to 53, back up to 55. So, okay, yeah, 48, 55, 60 is my my three after the pitching wedge now. So, Ooh, okay. Um, and then here it comes, the big announcement. A change? The putter. No. It is putter, though. Okay. That's the big oh. announcement. Is that there's there's no change to the putter. Wow. Uh, I am still okay. I'm still using I'm still using the Odyssey Tri Hot 5K number seven. I changed the grip. Okay. I went from a I went from a super stroke to one of the uh, cr- uh, cord pro onlys. Okay. So well, that's all that's, changed. That is all right. I, I, I dare I say making progress in terms of the. Uh, <laughs> You know, wavering back and forth, and then what's in the bag? But yeah. uh, again, yeah. I mean, this has been just a few weeks. You know, uh, give it, you know, another. Well, give it the rest of the year, and I'm sure something will change. But, um, but no, it's good. Uh, there's there's it's, always something that's going to change. Yeah, I, I always, I'm just I, I'm not I'm predicting your bag. I, lo- I love your bag because you have you stuck to that burner mini, and I'll never forget the, your reaction to testing that uh, when you're actually here and we did the video on it. If you haven't seen it, go check out yeah. the string report on the burner mini driver. Uh, from last summer, uh, Kevin, I, I, I think he knew immediately as he was hitting those first few shots that it was going to be in his bag. Yeah, I don't think there was any doubt. It's it is a it is a 
incredibly key component in that bag because it, it allows me to do effectively anything that I want off the tee because those holes where I, I'm just not comfortable hitting driver, I don't have to give up 40 yards. I can give up 20 yards and just tee it about this high and mm-hmm. just, you know, get it going. But the holes where, where driver freaks me out, I just pull that thing out and it's, it's just happy times. Yeah. Yeah. Must be nice to be that confident off the tee with with the club. Uh, someday I'll get there. Um, all right. Have you tried Have you tried the burner mini driver? I, I, no, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> maybe maybe there's that's part of the math equation that's missing. <laughs> maybe I should do that uh, next time. Next time I'll 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 bring it out there with me. Okay. Um, all, right. all right. So now. One thing I wanted to get to here is I part of this. I as I told you ahead of time, we'd take some comments and some questions from yeah uh, some, from some viewers uh, that are watching YouTube channel and have some questions for you. Um, I got a very fun one at the end that I may have hinted to you about before we started. Uh, so stay tuned for that if you're watching uh, or listening. But uh, I've got a few to rattle off here, and I'm just going to kind of send one by one at you, and we can kind of talk about them, go through some some fitting okay. related items. But uh, so the first one here is a shaft question this is from taylor robinson 202 on youtube uh one of our subscribers says i've used a project x 6.0 for years thinking about the dynamic gold 105 s 300 um would that be comparable for me so they're not exactly comparable shafts uh the project x 60 is 120 grams obviously the the dg is around 105 Uh, so you're gonna get a little bit lighter uh feel from the from the DG, um, DG should technically be a little higher launching and a little higher spinning. So if your if your ball flights a little bit low and maybe you're not getting as much stopping power as you want, the 105 would certainly be a a potential option there. Um, if you're looking maybe for a little more swing speed and you know going a little lighter might be might be you know something that works out. About 60% of people will tend to swing lighter faster. The other 40% actually swing heavier faster. So um, most important thing there, go see a fitter. Get in there yeah. and be able to be able to go head to head. You know, um, I can tell you what a shaft's designed to do. I can't tell you what it's going to do <laughs> until, I, until I actually see it, right? Yeah, because um, it's, it's actually fascinating. Yeah. I'm kind of curious more about what you said about the swing speed relative to shaft weight. Uh, cause I feel like the, the common perception is the lighter, the, the shaft the mm-hmm. faster, the swing. Um, so kind of, I guess, could you expand on that idea that, uh, a player might actually swing a heavier shaft faster? How does that, how would that work? So it just depends on that individual's makeup, right? So sometimes the, the, the sense is that it's lighter and I can move it faster. And then sometimes the sense is, Ooh, this is heavier and it may force them to actually move faster to make it feel like they're swinging it at the speed that they, they would expect to. So the majority of this is going to be a feel thing, right? Um, And how your body reacts to, to weight. Uh, I have tended to swing lighter faster, but a lot of people, you know, they, they get surprised when when they actually get a little heavier weight shaft and, and we see what happens. This is why when we when we do fittings, whether it's with irons or, or drivers, we're going to throw, you know, a lighter and a heavier option in there to see, you know, see how that player reacts to it. Hmm. Interesting. I guess I would that that's definitely not the, you know, the common perception, I don't think out there. But uh, no, it is something that if you're watching this and you, you know, you feel like you maybe don't have the right shaft. I mean, maybe that's part of the issue is you know that maybe that perception uh, and that's why you got to go see a fitter so um yeah next one here this is a good one uh as someone who plays a burner mini um primarily for off the t use right so this mm-hmm. is from uh home for you i think is how i'm going to say that uh need a deep faced 15 to 7 degree fairy wood for off the t only non draw bias and high moi is ideal any suggestions um wow that is a tall order i know um, I, I was thinking about that build and it's like you know man because a lot of the fairy woods in the 15 to 17 degrees are going to really kind of they're going to have a shallower face you're not really going to get the 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 deep face design on on many of those so it might be 
yeah. I would imagine it's going to be required. Maybe you're going to be a, adjusting using the hosel to get to that 15 to 17 degree window, maybe on a couple of these. Yeah. So if you're looking for 15 to 17 and not, sh not shallow face, okay. That kicks ping and Callaway out of it. Um, the QI 10 tour is a great golf club, very adjustable. 50 gram weight we can adjust, you know, help with spin and, and launch conditions. Um, Cobra's Dark Speed LS will get you 15 to 16 and a half degrees. Also, not a shallow face, both with really fast faces. Um, only issue there is they're not the high MOI models. Um, right. That's that's the that's the tough one there. Um, Golly, am I missing anything? So um, one idea I had, just uh, and this again, I'm I'm not the certified fitter here. You are, so you can tell me I'm insane uh, if you feel like it's appropriate. But can the TSR2 Plus be adjusted to get to 15 or no? I can't remember if it can or not. Yes. So I believe the standard. Wait, is standard loft on that only down to 14.5 or is that one? 13, I can't remember. Five. I can't remember if it's thirteen or thirteen and a half for standard loft, but I think I, think I remember it. I remember it not being as low as I thought it was going to be. Um, yeah, Drew, that's probably not bad. Uh, okay, hey, I'm contributing to the conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's that's thinking outside the bun a little bit. I like that. Um, yeah, TSR two plus that. That would potentially do it. I'm not sure that would get him all the way up to 17 degrees. Right, but right. And he said, get him up and to the comment is 15 degrees. to 17 degree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I guess in that window, it doesn't say specific number. So, yeah. Uh, and that would yeah. certainly bring some forgiveness. I think, yeah. you know, you throw that weight all the way back on the QI 10 tour, and that's putting that weight pretty far back. I think that's still a pretty darn stable fairway wood. Um, okay. Yeah, so that's true. That, go that's a lot. Go test out about that. QI 10 tour, dark speed LS and the TSR two plus. Yeah. That is kind of the, one of those unicorn yeah. requests that you probably don't get, uh, a ton yeah, that's a a the, the bag, whole, but... the whole high MOI thing really, really throws that one into, yeah. uh, into a different realm. Yeah. Yeah. If only there was a, you know, if there was a burner mini, that was a 15 degree club there, that would be perfect. But, uh, well, you can get a 13.5 up to 15.5. The only thing is it's big. So, you know, whether you want to hit a, you know, a, a gigantic spaceship off the off the turf or not, I don't know. Yeah. It is forgiving, and it's very deep face for a fairway wood. That's, yeah. But she big. <laughs> she big. Um, she this big. One, this one is from Fra Franzo's 1967. So this uh, this comment was actually on a video about the Callaway OptiFit hosel, um, but mm. I think it's it's important it's an important one to discuss here because with all the adjustments that are possible in golf clubs nowadays, um, it's kind of it could be maybe difficult to keep track of what's the priority. So this one is just it's a pretty simple question: Is the OptiFit hosel or the movable weight more impactful on a club? So this I guess in general. Optifit hosel could be any brand's adjustable hosel um, or movable yeah. weights on a club, which is more impactful um, yeah. to move around. It's a good question. Um, so typically when we're doing fittings, we're going to adjust the hosel first and see what kind of adjustment we get there. And okay. then if we need further adjustment, then we go into doing the, you know, moving the weights around. Mm -hmm. um, unless you get somebody in that's, you know, right off the bat, you're going full kitchen sink and you're throwing, you know, the adjustable hosel at it along with all the weight. We're typically going to start on the on the hosel first. The only thing about starting in the hosel is sometimes that can negatively affect the aesthetic of the golf club. So if somebody's really sensitive to a closed look face if we close yeah. that you know we put the draw setting on there and it looks shut that might not be the best way to go you might actually be better off putting the weight into a, a draw position so that all the work's being done behind the scenes um sure everybody's everybody's different some people are really sensitive to it i'm i'm really sensitive to it um 
but every again one of those things where everybody's a little bit different but typically i'm going to start in the hosel first and then start throwing weight second okay interesting yeah so that kind of so basically so you because i know the fitting process the, the second thing was it more or less it's kind of like what's most important is sort of at the beginning dialing in the club head which includes mm-hmm. dialing in the hosel and then the weights right but you kind of right. go in that order of what's most impactful and then you kind of move down down the line if you will there so um yeah i guess that the nice thing is we have different ways we can we can approach it different ways right i mean if if um if somebody is sensitive to the to the look of the face and and they don't like you know seeing the club face closed up then you know obviously we would just go straight into the straight into the weights yeah but i will usually just start with with hosel first and then yeah and And it's nice that you can do both i mean the fact that yeah, we have that option now is, is obviously really cool. So um, yeah. technology is awesome. So this this last one, this is kind of the last question, and we'll start to wrap up the show here a little bit. Uh, but yeah. this is from Dr. Grizz on YouTube. Uh, I, I'm familiar with this this user uh, actively commenting on our videos, um, asking what music would Kevin listen to when playing around since his taste in music is much better than Drew. Um, so really, uh, not sure that last part was really needed in the comment. It was like a little unnecessary kind of shade thrown at me. Um, but love that. Absolutely but, love that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, if you're out playing around, um, I guess what's, what's going on in the speaker in the, in the golf cart or in the push cart with you. So it very much depends on who is with me. So in general, I am a proponent of music on the golf course. Um, I try to keep it, you know, reasonable. Um, so I will typically put on classic rock for okay. if I'm in a group, because it's usually pretty, you know, non-offensive to most people. Most <laughs> people are like are not offended by class by classic rock. So 70s and 80s rock. Um, if I am out playing by myself, it is very likely going to be heavy metal mm. okay You're and trying to get a certain type either. of energy from like that or is stuff. it just uh absolutely 100 <laughs> percent. i mean that's look I'm, I'm using this stuff to 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 get me to get me revved up right either that or just to keep me awake could go either way um but uh yeah so i'm a i'm a metal guy okay i've got a wide taste in music like i'm all over the place but um yeah, most of the time, if I'm listening to stuff myself, it's uh, a lot of it's going to be heavy metal. So. Okay. Well, since uh, and most since people don't want to listen to that, right? Most people don't want to hear that stuff. Yeah. So, well, that's you know, if, I, I'm, if I'm playing with others, it, I'm suppose, not going to with the you know offensive part. You know, that's kind of why you probably yeah. led with that because I, yeah. I, there's there's probably a, a there's a small number of music genres that would have that I would that people might consider offensive, and I I suppose heavy metal is maybe one. Uh, that does oh, yes. fall into that category, but um, I guess so. So Dr. Grizz, you know, took a shot at me in the comment, and um, <laughs> so so he didn't ask for my opinion on it, but I'm going to give mine anyway. Um, Ooh, I really? when I'm on the golf course, I will do. Uh, my friends and I very very commonly are playing like just you know modern country stuff, um, and it's it's all about kind of the laid back summer vibes, if you will. Um, is kind of what we're going for there. So that's uh. It's it's pretty a pretty basic answer I suppose, but um, I think I'd, I still think you'd fit in in our in our group, Kevin. With earplugs, yes. <laughs> okay, now now you're taking shots too. <laughs> look, <right? laughs> look, I I I I've never held back on the fact that I do not like country music. Yeah, um, I suppose in pretty much any form. Now look, I like I said, I've got wide taste, and they are they're morphing a little bit. So I listen to. Um, a little tiny bit of Tyler Childers. Okay. You know who Tyler Childers is? Uh, this is, this is me speaking your language here. I'm, dude. Tr- I'm, this I'm is, trying this to speak your country language. Music. <laughs> He's like, this guy's like huge in country music. Okay. And then, uh, whiskey Myers. I'm okay. really quite down with whiskey Myers. So, okay. I have now stumped you again with two, two bands in your own genre you need to go now listen to a little bit of tyler yeah, Childers, okay. and you yeah. need to go listen to a little bit of whiskey myers whiskey myers is a little bit more leaning a little bit more into the the bluegrass side of things that i really have gotten into because for whatever reason i love the banjo 
right? There is yeah. no heavy metal you lose banjo me at the banjo. that I know of. So. You lose me at the banjo. See, really? That's, you don't yeah. like banjo? No, no. Oh, my goodness. No. Um, right. But anyway, this see, this is Dr. Grizz. Why'd you have to bring up music? I Classic think. rock. Classic rock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, all right, we'll wrap it there. Um, if you have That's any, my favorite other, question ever. Yeah, if you have any other comments or questions for Kevin, uh, <laughs> leave them on the uh, on the well on the YouTube video here. Um, if you, especially if for a music one, he's gonna love those, and he'll probably give you an answer right there in the in the video. Um, otherwise, subscribe to our channel um, or subscribe on your favorite audio platform uh, wherever you get the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. <laughs> got plenty more content coming and kevin is also making a trip to minnesota shortly um to film some videos so stay tuned for those on the youtube channel as well so kevin um we'll let you get back to it we wish you the best of luck in your uh golf competitions here coming up um obviously we're hoping to see you on the big stage here pretty soon either you know u.s senior open or champions whatever it might be um obviously uh we're rooting hard for you so thanks for swinging by giving your thoughts on golf and music um mostly appreciated in that regard (laughs) well thanks everybody uh good times